Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com and in this fly tying tutorial I'm going to show you the techniques involved for tying a parasol post. Stay tuned. Let's create this parasol post. I'm first going to start with some parachute post material. I'm going to be using the color fluorescent chartreuse in this video, though I also really like to use fluorescent pink, um, a dun gray, and my favorite's probably white just because it blends in so well in the water and it just doesn't inter interfere with anything and it doesn't appear to be too obtuse to those trout. I'm next going to use some 3X fluorocarbon. Now, I've used all sorts of different lines for this parasol. I've used the 2X, 3X, and 4X, but I've really settled on 3X in the fluorocarbon because it's a little bit stiffer. It won't just crimp down too much, but it also will not bulk up whenever you tie it into the fly. So this is the one I've settled on. And what we're going to do is put a, an improved cinch knot into our fluorocarbon. I'm going to use a piece of chartreuse colored line just for the sake of this video. And what I'm going to do with this line is Basically, let's, let's assume this is the tag end. I'm going to hold the tag end up and then create a loop going towards the standing line. In that loop, I'm going to place my fingers. I'm going to turn it four times. Then I'm going to take this tag end. I'm going to put it through the loop. Once I have it through the loop, I'm going to then put it back through the loop that it created and pull tight. Now I have this loop that's ready to be tightened down upon. So I have a piece of fluorocarbon that's ready to go, but before I can kind of put anything in it, let me show you what I've done with the parachute post material. I've cut two strands of it. Here is strand one, and here is strand two. So I'm gonna take these two strands and just put them together, just roll them around in my fingers, and I want them to just form just a really big clump of parachute post material. Once I have that clump, I can then grab my 3X fluoro. I have my loop already pre-made. And by the way, this is a really excessive um, clump right here in terms of its length. And that's really just for the purpose of this video so you can see everything clearly. So now I have my loop. I'm gonna place my loop over it. I'm just gonna kind of fold this material over. I'm gonna grab onto the standing end of this loop, the standing end of the line. I'm just gonna pull and tighten it against that material. Once I know it's tight, I'm going to grab my scissors, cut away the tag end of the fluoro, and then I'm going to trim this parachute post material. I tend to really trim this stuff down. I don't want it too bulky. I really just don't want too much of it. I really want this fly landing very softly in the water. So once I have it trimmed down, this is what it will look like. Then next I'm going to trim away the fluorocarbon. I'm just going to leave it about two and a half inches, maybe three inches in length. So it looks like a little chartreuse flower ready to be tied in. Once you start making these parasol posts, you're going to have them all over the place. Trust me. Your next decision will be what color to go with. These are the two that I tend to choose more often than not. I go with white in situations that are low water, very clear water, spooky trout. Basically anytime I don't want to disrupt the fish at all. Otherwise I'll go with fluorescent chartreuse or fluorescent pink. I love those colors because they're very easy to see in a couple situations. We're talking when we have to make really far casts, 50 or even 60 feet, or in those low light situations like in the morning or at dusk. So let's tie this one with chartreuse. In my Stonfo Transformer vise, I have a Honic competition hook. It's the H390BL. This is their clink hammer hook. It's a size 16. It's got just a great bend, and it's meant to imitate an emerger. And that's what we're doing here with this parasol. Let's get some thread on our hook. And that's about where I want to stop it. And that's where we're going to tie in this parasol. Now, I intentionally left the fluorocarbon a little bit longer and I'm going to tie it in pretty long at least for the sake of this video just so you can get an idea of what I want to do. So I have about four or five wraps in there. They're very loose wraps and I have to decide how far down I want this hook hanging from that parachute material. Now it's really up to you in terms of where you want this hook in regards to the surface of the water. 
I don't like having super long posts. We're talking three, four, five. I've even seen these six inch posts because it's really almost a one and done. When you try casting something like that, it just makes your line go all over the place. This post can wrap around your hook depending on the material that you've used. So I just would not recommend using very long ones. Instead, I like to stick with a shorter post. I'm talking anywhere from about the, the length of the shank of the hook to maybe twice as long as that. So right now, this is about the, we'll say the, the longest I would ever have it. That's a little bit under an inch, maybe exactly an inch. So that's about the, the upper limit. And I'm even gonna pull it in a little bit more than that. Let's go just a hair more, somewhere around right in here. Now, whenever you see this, you might say, there is no way that that's not going to disrupt the trout. But trust me, it's like they believe that this hook and this chartreuse piece of material are not even connected. It's really tough to believe, but when you start catching fish on it, you're gonna say, yeah, he was right. They really do work. So to lock this in place, now I'm just gonna to continue to wrap down the hook about three quarters of the way, and then back up towards the post. I'm gonna take the post, hold it down, and kind of pull it back, and create a little bit of a thread dam in front of it. Couple figure eight wraps. And now I'm ready to complete my fly. Let's get that fluorocarbon out of there. If you feel the need to, to put some super glue or some type of head cement over your thread, by all means go for it, but I've really never felt the need for that. I've never had these pull out. You can pull them out, there's no question about it, but you're not really gonna have anything attached to this. And if they come out, <sighs> Gosh, that probably means you've caught a lot of fish on the fly and um, you can retire that one. So now that we've kind of talked a little bit, or at least I've shown you how to create the post and how to tie it in, now let's change the camera angle a bit and talk a little bit more about this fly. If that looked easy, trust me, it is. This is one of those things that you can just crank out on a regular basis. For starters, let me go back and correct something I said. The knot that I use is an improved clinch knot. There are so many different knots that you can use to lock that parachute post in. Don't be afraid to experiment, but that's the one that I use. Now to talk a little bit more about this, this original technique was really popularized by Fran Betters. I know a little bit about Mr. Betters, but I've never really seen that connection he has to this style. So if you have some information on it, I'd love to hear from you down below in the comment section, or you can email me that info at tcamisa at gmail.com. My personal connection came through an article by Jim Schrollmeyer and Ted Leeson. They wrote about this approximately 10 years ago from the filming of this video, and I was just sold on it ever since. Now, in my early days of experimenting with this parasol post, I just believed that this was a post intended for midge patterns. So we're talking 18s to 24s. But over the years, that thinking has definitely expanded. Whenever we're talking wintertime, sure, I'll go with some midges, but as we progress into the spring, I'm fishing some mayfly and caddisfly emergers underneath this post. Experiment and see what works. In the summertime, sure, go back to those midges. In the fall, try some isonychia emergers underneath it. You will definitely be surprised at how effective this is, and it almost doesn't even look right because you have this giant post just popping out of your fly, but for some reason, the trout ignore it, especially those technical ones. Have fun with it, play around with those color combinations. As I mentioned with the post, my two favorite are by far white, because it just blends in so well, and that fluorescent chartreuse, because I can see it just a long way off. Well, thank you so much for viewing this fly tying tutorial. If you'd like to watch more of these, you can check out my website, which is troutandfeather.com. This video is going to be housed under, if you click fly tying videos, I'll place it both under emergers and fly tying techniques because I believe it belongs in both of those categories. If you're into social media, Trout and Feather is on both Facebook and Instagram, and I'd appreciate the follow. Once again, thank you so much, and if you'd like to mention anything about this video, is this a technique you're into? Is it something you've tried before and you have some tips for others? By all means, mention that down below in the comment section, or again, you can email me at tcamisa at gmail.com. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see all of you next time.